ahead and, and take a look at page two here. So it says, Jamal's at the State Fair playing some of the games. At one booth, he throws this half kilogram ball forward with a velocity of 21 meters per second in order to hit the 0.2 kilogram bottle that's sitting on a shelf. When he makes contact, the bottle goes flying forward at 30 meters a second. What's the velocity of the ball um, after it hits the bottle? So we know that this is an elastic collision. That's why I ended up setting this up as um, MV plus MV equals MV plus MV. Um, to begin with, I've got a ball and a bottle. They're separate objects. So that's why we have two separate momenta here. Um, and then afterwards, the ball and the bottle are still separate. The ball didn't end up like sticking to the bottle or something like that, um, or, or vice versa. So that's why I end up having it set up as MV plus MV here. Each, each of our two objects, each with its own separate momentum. All right, so let's take a look at where we get this 0.5 from. So we know that the ball, so this one booth throws a 0.5 kilogram ball. So that's where this 0.5 is coming from. We know that the ball to begin with is going to have the same mass as the ball to end with, so that's why I can put 0.5 for both the beginning portion of this equation and the ending portion of this equation. Um, and then it tells me that that ball is being thrown forward with a velocity of 21 meters a second. So that forward is actually really important. Um, forward means that I'm going to be throwing this in the positive direction. Um, I suppose you could think of it as the negative direction if you wanted to, but then you'd flip all your signs down here, reverse from what I have. All right, but just to make things easier, I would say always think of the forward direction, whatever that direction is, as positive, and think of the backwards direction as negative. All right, so we know that the ball is being thrown forward with a velocity of 21 meters per second, so I have positive 21 right down there. Um, we are trying to hit a 0.2 kilogram bottle, and just like the, the ball, it's sort of similar logic here. Whatever my mass is to begin with of that bottle, it's still going to be the same to end with, unless it like shattered or something like that. Um, but we're assuming that it's intact because it doesn't tell us anything different. And it says that the bottle is sitting on a shelf. All right, so sitting on a shelf means it's just it's at rest. It has no velocity which means it's also going to have no momentum. So what we could do uh, when we go to solve this problem, we could just cross this expression off if we wanted to and not even worry about it. Or if that kind of freaks you out to do that, you could always solve and it's going to zero itself out anyway. So when you add zero to um, whatever else, it's not going to change anything. All right, so now we know that the bottle has that mass of 0.2. It's sitting on the shelf. And it says, and when he makes contact, the bottle goes flying forward at 30 meters per second. So that's where that 30 is coming from in the second half of the formula. Okay. And we could go back and check ourselves and actually convert this into basically um, English from, from a, a mathematical equation. It looks like I have a half kilogram ball that's being thrown forward at 21 meters per second. It comes into contact with a bottle that has a mass of 0.2 kilograms that is sitting at rest. Afterwards, my ball is going at a certain vel unknown velocity. After coming into, um, and the bottle goes flying forward or moves at 30 meters per second in the same direction as the ball. So then at this point, it becomes a whole bunch of smaller equations we can think of it as rather than thinking of it as oh my goodness I've got all this math in front of me think of it as oh, what's 0.5 times 21 10 and a half 0.2 times 0 is 0 so I don't even care about this expression anymore because I've I've already used it to insert all my variables at this point it's just a ton of small simple math problems don't look at it as one big complex thing excuse me and then our mass we you know was 0.5 times V just gives us 0.5 V and then the bottle is has 0.2 kilogram mass at 30 meters per second so 0.2 times 30 gives me that 6 right? so at this point again don't worry about any of this we no longer care about that 
we're just going to simplify further. So 10.5 plus 0 gives me 10.5. 0.5v plus 6, I can't really combine those because they're not like terms, so it just leaves me with 0.5v plus 6. All right, so then at that point, I'm just going to continue to simplify down further and further and further until I get my variable completely isolated. So 0.5v plus 6, well, if I want to get 0.5v by itself and ultimately get v by itself, we're going to get rid of this addition by 6. So in order to get rid of addition by 6, do the opposite. So I'll subtract 6, and remember, algebraic rules tells me if I do it to one side, I have to do it to the other side. So I end up with 10.5 minus 6 gives me this 4.5, and, and then I'm left over with 0.5v, because those 6's cancel. And then at that point, um, again, don't ask yourself, like, do I divide 4.5 by 0.5, or do I divide 0.5 by 4.5? Uh, you want to you wanna more along the lines ask yourself, well, how do I get V by itself? Well, currently V is being multiplied by 0.5, so if I want to do the opposite of that to get rid of it, I've got to divide, right? Because the opposite of multiplication here is division. So to get V by itself, we divide by 0.5. And then if I do it to one side, I have to do it to the other side. So divide the other side by 0.5. And then that question of what do I divide by what, it works itself out um, based on algebra rules. Well, 4.5 divided by 0.5 gives me 9. So that's where that 9, uh, that's how we got 9 in the end. Now I would say you're not quite done. You don't ever want to finish one of these problems and just leave it at the answer. You want to think of um, a couple things. Does it, does it make sense in relation to the problem? Is it, is this number answering what the problem's asking. So the problem's asking what's the velocity of the ball after it hits the bottle. So we do come out with 9 meters per second. Meters per second is a velocity, so it seems like so far it is making some sense for us. But then we furthermore have to go and take a look, does this number make sense in relationship to what's going on with my numbers? So it looks like to begin with, my ball is going 21 meters per second. It ends up coming into contact with an object that has some sort of mass to it. That object was at rest. So does it make sense that this velocity is slower? So my ball was tw going 21 meters per second. It looks like it's dropped down to 9 meters per second. Well, it came into contact with something, so it makes sense that that number, that 21, would decrease, and in the end, my ball would be going slower, which 9 meters per second is slower than 21. So then in order to check your work, redo the problem, only this time we don't have any, any variables to solve for. We're just checking to see if it's a true statement. So insert 9 for v, and that's what I did over here. I inserted 9 for my, my v, and I'm checking to make sure that both sides equal one another. And just like the math over here, we're just going to look at this as multiple little tiny steps. So 0.5 times 21 is 10.5, 0.2 times 0 is 0. 10.5 plus 0 is 10.5, and, and then 0.5 times 9 gives me 4.5, 0.2 times 30 gives me 6, 4.5 plus 6 gives me 10.5. So the statement checks out to be true. 10.5 does, in fact, equal 10.5. So I know that I am, I'm good to move on. I like question B here because uh, it really makes you think. If the, if the bottle were more massive, how would this affect the final velocity of the ball? So there's a couple ways that we could we could do this. We could take the the bottle that was 0.2, we make it more massive. Put in 0.3 because that's following along with the with the problems asking me. If the bottle were more massive, well, make it more massive. It doesn't tell us how much more massive. We can make it a little more massive, like I did, or we could make it quite a bit more massive. Um, how is it going to affect the final velocity? Would it, would it make sense that the final velocity would change even more, or would it make sense that it would change even less? So think about a, a, a real-world scenario. If I take a ball and I'm whipping it at a, at a bottle here, I'm terrible at drawing to begin with, let alone on a, on a digital pad here, but 
if I whip this ball at the bottle, that ball is going to end up going, go flying forward. But if I make this bottle a lot more massive, that's my version of a more massive bottle. Uh, remember, ma more massive doesn't have to mean bigger. It just mean it could mean the same size but more dense. But in this case, I'll make it look um, a little bit bigger. Well, if I whip this ball at the bottle, what's going to happen is maybe I won't knock that bottle over, and um, or maybe I will knock the bottle over. But now that it's bigger, it's going to slow the ball down even more. If I make it way big, what's going to end up happening is I might not actually even end up knocking that bottle over, and instead the ball ends up hitting it and ends up com coming um, coming backwards, flies backwards towards us, which would mean that the velocity of the ball changed even more. And so if I make the mass just a little bit bigger of the bottle, that's what this 0.3 is, because up here it was 0.2, same deal here, 0.3 here, because up here it was 0.2. Making that more massive, it looks like my velocity ends up changing more. Right? Instead of going from 21 meters a second, how I initially threw it, and dropping down to 9 meters per second after making contact with the bottle, I end up going from 21 meters per second all the way down to 3 meters per second. And you may want to try this problem out on your own where you replace the masses with something even larger, and you'll see that you actually even come out with a, you actually come out with a negative velocity if you make these masses large enough, which would mean that it, it changes even more. All right. All right. So let's take a look at number two here. We've got good old, uh, good old Jean, and uh, she's rolling a six kilogram bowling ball down the alley um, at some some bowling pins, and we want to see what happens to the the velocity afterwards. So this problem is very similar to the previous one, so I won't go into it nearly as in depth. But let's take a look at where I at least got the numbers from. So we know to begin with that the the ball is moving, has some sort of velocity. It's going towards a pin. Think of bowling. The pin's just sitting there. And then afterwards, that ball ends up hitting the pin, and it changes velocity in, in some sort of way, right? It causes the, the pin to speed up, and it causes the ball to slow down a little bit because law of conservation of momentum would tell me that however much momentum I have to begin with, I've got to have to end with total. Well, I have no momentum in the pin. I've got a bunch of uh, momentum in the ball, so that means if I end up somehow increasing my mo momentum in the pin, that can't just come from nothing. So that means that the ball must have had to lose some momentum in order for the pin to gain some momentum. Let's see if that checks out with my numbers. So we've got our 6 kilogram bowling ball, and coming from up here, uh, it's going down the alley for the league championship. One pin is still standing, so if it's just standing there, it's at zero. Gene hits it head-on with a velocity of 11 meters per second. So that ball was going 11 meters per second when it ended up hitting the pin. It tells us that the 2 kilogram pin acquires a forward velocity of 12 meters per second. So we've got our 2 kilogram pin, and of course the mass doesn't change after we hit the pin. And then it acquires that forward velocity of 12 meters per second. And we end up solving for V. Does it make sense that the ball slows down? Well, to begin with, it was going 11 meters per second. Now it's going 7 meters per second. So it makes sense. It does slow down. And we, of course, can do our check step, which I, which I showed.